Hi, and thanks for watching this video, which is about uh, Oric One game programming. Um, in particular, what I want to do is see if I can program, oh my god, a uh, game in 10 minutes. So, uh, the reason for this challenge is I thought I'd try something a little bit different and um, reminisce back to the early days when I first started to learn programming in BASIC and slowly built my knowledge up uh, in 1983 as a 13-year-old uh, how to uh, program. And BASIC is a very accessible language, although maligned and uh, not really a professional uh, grade language these days, um, still it was very easy to get into and things like the uh, the Auric manual you know everybody had or it was very common to have a basic manual to go along with your computer and it will teach you some of the um, elements of programming um, it didn't always um, tell you everything uh, the Auric one manual showed a lot of examples uh, even showed machine code near the uh, back end of the book but it didn't show you how to program a game I actually learned to program games uh, by typing in uh, listings from uh, magazines like like this, your computer in August 1983, and um, there is an Oric game in here. It's not actually listed, but uh, it's inside. Uh, there's an Oric game, and um, typing in these listings, I could see oh, there's things like game loops and um, how to uh, how to process uh, what to process inside a game loop. So. Um, a combination of the manual and playing around and experimenting and typing in game listings is how I learned to program and it's what got me into uh, computing as a career and um, uh, programming in BASIC uh, actually put me uh, in good stead for then learning other uh, more advanced and professional languages like C and C++ and Java and C Sharp etc. Um, so uh, let's program a game. Uh, in the corner there I've got uh, my laptop uh, with a 10 minute countdown timer so I want to uh, stay honest and see that timer um, and not type anything else after the 10 minutes has expired. Um, what game shall we uh, create? Uh, it has to be really really simple. I don't think I will have any time for uh, graphics or any kind of sound um, effects, uh, maybe not even a scoring system, but basically um, I think what I can do is a Space Invader, singular, Space Invader game where you'll have a single Space Invader coming down the screen and the player can move their base uh, to shoot at the um, alien and if you manage to shoot the alien then another one will appear somewhere else and start descending. Um, if the alien gets to the bottom then the game's over. So that's kind of like enough and uh, I think enough for 10 minutes and by the way uh, confession time I have tried a couple of times uh, and messed it up badly. Um, not so much the time uh, elements but basically I haven't done something like this for such a long time and I'm using a real Auric and typing on a real Auric keyboard that doesn't help uh, but still um, this is uh, my second, no, third go, and I'm hoping I can squeeze in the basics of uh, a simple game uh, and we can see how uh, it, a, a, a simple Space Invader game uh, would, would be created on the Auric. So um, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to start the timer now. It's counting down. So uh, initialize, let's go. We need to initialize the game. Uh, the whole game, uh, and then we need to uh, initialize uh, or start the game. Uh, so that's setting up variables to be able to start the game. Once we're once we're into there, we can start what's called the game loop, which will um, basically process one tick of the game world. And each tick, we want to move the player. Well, check the keys and move the player if required. We want to uh, check the bullets and move the bullets. And we need to check the alien and move the alien. So that's my game loop. Uh, I need to introduce a short delay. Because even on the Auric, actually the keyword is called wait and the remark is delay. Even on the Auric it might go too fast otherwise. 
Uh, and that's the, the loop. And I want to keep looping around doing those three things until dead equals true. And dead is a variable which I will set to false, uh, but then obviously set to true if uh, the alien gets to the bottom. And if it gets to the bottom, then let's process uh, game over. Game over. And then let's go back to 920 where we start the game again. So for initialization, um, I, I guess uh, I just want to change the screen color, make it something a bit prettier than uh, let's make it red foreground actually. Uh, so paper four is blue, uh, ink is one which is red. Uh, so it's blue and red, blue background, red foreground. Uh, and let's clear the screen. And uh, no, I don't need to clear the screen here because I will screen, clear the screen later on. So let's just return there. Uh, now line 2000, uh, start game. What do I want to do here? Well, I definitely need to clear the screen because I just said I need to do that. And then I need to set the player's coordinates. So that's going to be in variables px and py. Um, about 19 is the center of the screen. And py equals 25 will be near the bottom, not the second to bottom row of the of the Oryx screen. Um, the bullet also needs to be uh, initialized. Let's uh, set that to zero. And when y equals zero, the bullet y coordinate is zero, that indicates no bullet on the screen. <coughs> Excuse me. Then um, alien x and y coordinate, when that's zero, it means we need to spawn another alien. So, um, oh, and dead equals uh, false. So you're not dead yet. So, even though I've used the word dead, Oracle only looks at the first two characters of a variable name, so DE is the actual variable name, but it does allow you to use longer names, but only uses the first two characters. So uh, in 3000, we need to move the player, I think, yes. Uh, first, let's um, get a key press from the keyboard, and if it's nothing's been pressed, then K$ dollar will be uh, just an empty string. Uh, now, before we move the player, let's plot a space to where the player is to erase the player from the screen and then check the key. If k$ dollar equals uh, z and you're not at the left of the screen, so z is left, then we can decrement the x-coordinate. However, if you've pressed um, x, which is going to go right, and px is less than 38, then px is plus 1, so we add 1 to the x coordinate. Uh, so now at this point, we've updated the player's coordinates, and we can put the player on the screen. I'm using ampersand to represent the player. Now well, there's one more key to try, which is uh, the fire button, so if it's space, which is the fire button, and by equals zero, which means there is no bullet on the screen, then let's set b x is equal to the player's x coordinates and by is equal to the player's y coordinates. Um, and then I think we're done here. Uh, oh, I might just add a little uh, sound effect on here. Let's do it because even though I'm running out of time, I'm going to put zap. That's going to do a nice little sound effect. Okay, uh, 4,000, move the bullets. Okay, um, move bullet. So if uh, by equals zero, then there is no bullet on the screen, then we have to return. Don't, don't do anything. However, if, uh, if not, then we need to plot uh, at the current position of the bullets, we need to plot a space to erase it, and then we need to make the bullet go up one. Now, at that point, uh, now at this point, we need to check the what's at this uh, position in the screen. So that's called SCRM. So, SCRM of the bullets' new coordinate is the hit, um, and then if you've hit something, uh, if h is equal to the ASCII code of the alien, the alien is going to be the ampersand, yeah. then uh, you've hit the alien, so let's let's do a sound effect, shoot, and let's, let's, let's erase what's there, and then let's set the 
bullet to zero and a wide coordinate zero and the aliens wide coordinate zero to show there's no alien as well. Uh, let's add one to the score and then we can return at that point there. However, if nothing was hit, then let's plot at the bullets coordinate, the bullets, which is signified by the up arrow. And now we can return from this routine. Then uh, 5000 is uh, moving the, the alien. We've got three and a half minutes left. Uh, if the alien's y coordinate is zero, then we need to uh, spawn one. So let's uh, create an alien uh, which is going to appear somewhere between coordinate two and seven on the y. And um, oh, well, I, I really wish I hadn't done that. Then a y is equal. To, I'm running, running out of time. Uh, just two, and then set the x coordinate equal to another random number. 5 plus 3, uh, so now I've spawned an alien, and I've got to go if, uh, so now uh, I can erase the alien, A, X, A, Y to space, let's make the alien go down, X, A, Y, no, 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 A, Y equals A, Y plus 1, now I need to check that I haven't moved into the bullet, so let's do H, equals S C R N, uh, alien X, alien Y. Um, if H equals ASCII code of uh, the up arrow, then if ASCII code, so you've hit the bullet. Uh, then uh, go to 4 0. Oh, I've really messed up here. I don't want to duplicate this code, but it looks like I'm going to. Uh, if I could ask it, then, then let's set the ASCII code to H equals ASC. Let's fool it into uh, thinking it's hit the alien and then go to uh, 4 0 5 0. Okay. Um, and then 5050, if nothing's been hit, then let's uh, plot the alien. To the alien is that character. And then if AY is greater than equal to 26, then dead equals true. He's got to the bottom, game over. Let's do explode. You know, that makes a nice uh, big chunky sound effect. And let's return here. And then 6,000 was the game over. And uh, what we're going to do here, we're going to just zap a couple of times, zap a couple of times, print, uh, score equals, and print the score. Then we're going to wait, say 100, which is a second, and then we can return. Um, somehow I managed to do this quicker than I had previously done, so I'll probably mess something up badly. But what I'll do is I'm going to pause the time. I've got 30 seconds left, um, so nine and a half minutes, and let's let's examine this code. Okay, so up to line 100 is just the core setup. Initialize the game, start, get variables for the start of the game, and then in a loop, move the player, the bullet, and the alien. Um, and then initialize just really sets up the screen color. The the main here is uh, the start game at 2000. Uh, I'm just double checking the code here to see if it's going to work. But maybe we shouldn't I shouldn't bore by doing that. Let's just run it. I mean that's a good thing about basic, right? So you can just run it. Okay, the alien's coming down, and I messed up there. Score zero. Okay. Oh, so I missed. Okay. Score zero again. Oh, okay. I'm doing pretty well here in killing these aliens. So the bullet's going up. Can you actually see this on the screen? I don't know. I think I'm going to miss out here. Five. Okay. 
This is working. This is working. It's cool. I'm not going to get there, am I? Score equals six. Something went wrong there. So let's have a look. Um, let's hope the alien get to the bottom. Eight. Okay. Let's break this. Let's make the ink colour something we can see. Uh, now, what's going on here? Um, start again. Oh, okay. I didn't reset the score. Okay. Now, uh, I've got an idea to add a high score as well as reset the score. So let's see if in 30 seconds I that's remaining, I can at least do that. So go. Uh, I'm going to go 2055 S equals 0. And then in initialize, I'm going to go 1015 high score equals 0. Uh, and then list 6000. Uh, list. Oh, I'm going to run out of time. Um, I was going to I was going to show the high score six out of five if SC greater than HS. Okay, well that's telling me that I've run out of time. That line was going to say if the current score is greater than the high score, then make the new high score equal to that score. Uh, then I was going to print that out. So I haven't got time to do that, and I. I mustn't cheat. So now let's run it. I'm trying to get across desperately. I got it. Oh. Yes. I don't know why the alien's insisting on coming there, but now it's. I'm never going to get to it. Three. Okay. Now next time I play, I should find. Missed it, and because I can't do another bullet until that one's gone, score equals one. Great, that works. So, there we go. Uh, like I said, I had a couple of goes at this already and messed it up badly, um, but, but I hope I managed to talk through the lines of the game as I was writing it out. Um, the only like thing I think I did weird here is that to um, reuse the code in line 4050 that basically erases the alien and adds one to your score. Uh, then in line 5040, um, I needed to add this check because the it's possible for the bullet to move up one and move into a space and that's fine. But then um, for the alien to uh, move uh, down one um, and basically jump over where the where the bullets is um, so if I don't check if I don't check that the alien has moved into the bullet then um, it, it won't go so that's what line that 5040 does and what I did was I, I used the variable H for the hit to detect what's on the screen and if it's uh, the, the the bullet then what I did was I changed H to be the, the code for the uh, invader and then go to 4050 and in 4050 it says oh you've hit the invader and it does the um, the hit uh, uh, activities hit code uh, so that's the only thing that I was that I did was slightly weird um, in, in case it's a bit confusing but I think the rest of it is uh, pretty straightforward right um, and as I say it shows how easy it is to um, uh, write a game. I mean, you know, imagine as a you know, 12, 13, 10 year old, some people were even younger than me when they got into their computers. And um, these are the kind of machines that we, you know, we played around in back in the uh, early 80s to um, learn to program. And um, yeah, it kept me uh, in good stead for the last 40 years because programming is uh, not so much about what language you learn, but also about understanding. Uh, how to break down a problem into small um, steps and uh, and structure your thought process. So um, if you got this far, thank you very much. We're nearly 20 minutes in. That's because we had to write the game in 10 minutes, then debug, a bit, debug it a little bit, uh, as well as then play the game um, and, uh, and, and then try and get to uh, uh, a useful kind of conclusion. So thanks very much for listening and watching this video. 
and uh, see you on the next video.